Hello, David Ansari here of the Free Market Foundation in Johannesburg, South Africa. We at the FMF are deeply saddened to learn of the passing of Yuri Maltsev, Professor of Economics at Carthage College and a Senior Fellow at the Ludwig von Mises Institute in the United States. Professor Maltsev was a great friend of the Free Market Foundation. He traveled extensively around the world, but also to South Africa. He made several trips here, and during his time, he established very firm bonds with the people at the FMF, as well as the broader liberal and free market community in South Africa. We are greatly upset to hear of his passing and wish to communicate our condolences to his friends, family, and colleagues who may be mourning his passing with us. In 2014, Professor Maltsev was awarded the FMF's inaugural Luminary Award for, quote, his tireless dedication to upholding liberty and the inspiration he brings to the people whose lives he touches. Professor Maltsev grew up in the Soviet Union and witnessed firsthand the perils of a socialist system and the great tragedy and human suffering that such a system brought about. In this extract from his acceptance speech in February 2014 at the Free Market Foundation offices, Professor Maltsev outlines some of the evils of the communist system in the then Soviet Union. Enjoy. So then some people would say, what is socialism? What is communism? There is a lot of confusion. A lot of my colleagues in American academia would say, communism is bad, it's <coughs> like fascism. But socialism is good. However, there was, no any, there was no communism. Communism is a fiction. Communism, even according to Marx, can occur only five, six hundred years from now. And that would be the society with the state withered away. There'll be no state. There'll be no money. People would work as hard as they possibly can for free. And then they would go to this huge, huge uh, warehouses of public goods, kind of like big public Woolworths with no cashiers. And they would take whatever they like. And the people would be so nice that they would work as hard as they possibly can, and they take as little as they need. <laughs> so that would be the, and amazingly enough, most, I would say, leaders, socialist leaders in the world, all the time they would believe that it's people who are bad. I just gave an interview to radio in Cape Town, and there was one caller, and he said, you are wrong, socialism is great. The system is great. It's just people are bad. People are lazy, greedy. So this is, a, and that's exactly what socialism is. It's incessant war on human character, incessant war on human nature. And that explains why so many people were murdered. So this is, this is a quote from Marx about communism. You can see in a communist society, Nobody has one exclusive sphere of activity, but each can become accomplished in any branch he wishes. To hunt in the morning, fish in the afternoon, rear cattle in the evening, criticize after dinner, without ever becoming hunter, fisherman, herdsman, or critic. So that's the, that's the nature of communism. This, this is society, <coughs> society which never existed and never would exist. So, so why then they resorted to mass murder. According to a famous American demographer, Rudy Ramel of University of Hawaii, um, under socialist regime, 220 million people were murdered. 220 million people. Socialism produced, the only thing it produced in great numbers would be mass murder and mass poverty. And we should all the time keep it in mind. Unfortunately, the only lesson of history, as Russians would say, is that it does not teach us anything. And that's exactly what happened. That all this dead, all these innocent victims, um, I think that our, that our uh, dedication um, uh, of, of, of remembrance uh, should be not to repeat these devilish experiments which these people were staged upon. Um, in the Soviet Union, Anywhere from 43 to 61 million were p p people were killed. 43 million was confirmed even by the KGB. Uh, you remember maybe Perestroika, the, that was the program of reforms um, initiated by, by um, Mikhail Gorbachev. Uh, part of Perestroika was also policy of glasnost or openness, openness. 
Uh, it was not nothing to do with freedom of speech, just a little bit more transparency in government affairs. And they would put ministers on the spot, and these ministers uh, would face questions from the audience. Uh, it will be some call. In, uh, uh, and uh, Khrushchev was at that time chairman of the KGB. And one caller called, and he said, I think that 43 million people were murdered by your institution. Is it a true number? And Mr. Khrushchev, he said, well, I don't know for sure, but I promise to be here in a week. So a week later, the whole country was glued to TV screens to find out how many millions of skeletons they have in their cupboard. And Mr. Khrushchev, he said, number is about right, comrades, but it's preposterous to believe that all these people were murdered. Most of them died of natural causes. And moderator, she was already a courageous lady, and she said, well, if you don't feed people, they die of natural causes. If you don't provide clothes, people in Siberia, they die, die of natural causes. And uh, well, he said, well, people die everywhere. So it's 43, according to Rudy Ramel, 61, or Solzhenitsyn Foundation in Moscow, 61 million people. For me, it doesn't even matter whether it's 43 or 61. It's horrendous. The numbers are beyond human imagination. Stalin himself used to say, death of one person is a tragedy. Death of a million, just statistic. And that's exactly how they were treating people. So socialism degenerates in any way, in any form, into a system of mass murder and public slavery. Look at the islands of socialism today, Cuba, North Korea, Vietnam, Laos, these are countries which, which are so anti-human that they degenerated in some kind of reactionary socialist monarchies because their rulers cannot trust anyone except members of their own families, of their own families. I travel to Cuba with my students because Cuba is a great place to inoculate young people against the bug of socialism. Thank you for watching this extract from the late Professor Yuri Maltsev's acceptance speech of the inaugural FMF Luminary Award in February 2014. If you would like to watch the full address, you can do so by clicking on the link in the description below or in the pinned comment.